Hi there, uh, today I'm going to have a go at making the cylinder covers. So this is a piece of cast iron and uh, I've just trued uh, the side and the face up. So what I'll do now is I'll switch it round in the four jaw chuck and true up the rest of the side and the face and then I'll reduce the diameter uh, on that portion to uh, round about one and an eighth of an inch. Okay, so I'll uh, just clean that up with uh, a bit of wet and dry and uh, try and work out what to do next. I've read Tubal Kane's instructions and at this moment in time I just don't understand them. So um, I'll get back to you once I've decided how to go about the next stage. Okay, so I think I know what I'm doing here. Um, so I need to create a flange here which is going to be five eighths of an inch in diameter and that will just slot inside the uh, cylinder. Um, so I work that out to be a quarter of an inch in. So I'm going to use this facing tool to make the cut a quarter of an inch in and it's going to be cutting uh, sort of lengthwise um, one thirty second of an inch. So I think that's about 30 thou. So I'll cut in uh, 10 thou increments on the uh, compound slide. Okay, so I've decided this is going to be the rear cover, so that fits nicely on that flange, and I need to part it off um, 3 16 from this front face here. vibrating a lot. Well I've uh, honed the uh, tin coated tip and I've slowed the speed right down to uh, around about 150 rpm and it seems to be going a lot better.
took some time but we got there in the end um, I think I've learnt from that is um, run it as at the slowest speed possible uh, don't lubricate and uh, make sure that you've got um, a carriage lock and you um, lock your compound slide as well so they earn, they earned their keep today um, so like I said it took a while but um, good result so now I'll face this off like I did this piece and uh, create this little spigot again okay so off camera I uh, machined the second cover and parted it off and um, the next stage is to um, machine the other sides. Now tubal cane um, suggests making a little holder something like that so that's a piece of aluminium uh, one and a half inches in diameter and I've cut a little uh, a recess in there that enables the cover to be fitted in. Now I've also um, cut here um, a cut right through and then some partial cuts here and the idea is uh, that will be held in the four, in the three jaw chuck um, with one jaw there, the other jaw there and the other jaw there and that will create a nice tight fit to enable me to uh, start machining that end ok so this is the thicker cover and uh, I put a dial gauge on the outside edge and run out was about uh, 4 thou which I'm guessing will be ok um, I faced up this, this end and uh, now what I need to do is to drill a 5.7mm hole uh, 7 30 seconds of an inch deep which I reckon is uh, around about 5.6mm so I'm going to first of all um, drill uh, using this 4mm drill bit I've already centred it and uh, then I'll drill using the 57 And uh, here I'm tapping a quarter inch by 32 TPI. So now I need to create the boss, which will be 3 eighths of an inch in uh, diameter. Um, and I need to cut to a depth of 3 sixteenths of an inch. Well there's been a slight delay in proceedings. Um, this end cover here requires a recess to be cut um, about an eighth of an inch wide and one thirty second of an inch deep. Now I don't know how to do that on the lathe. Um, I, d I certainly don't think I've got a tool to do it. So I've ended up 
uh, deciding to do it on the mill. So I've ordered um, a 3mm end mill um, which has got a 4mm shank. Um, so I've also ordered uh, a collet chuck um, for the mill. Um, I do actually have a ER25 4mm collet uh, so I'm okay um, with that. So anyway, um, the bits and bobs have just arrived so uh, we'll go over to the mill and uh, see how we get on. So this is the setup, my uh, new collet chuck and uh, it's already centred. What I've done, I, I don't have a DRO for the uh, Y axis or indeed the X axis. So I've used this, uh, I think it's a poor man's approach. I've just put this dial gauge on here. Um, so this will help me keep track of the centre point. I'm only going to be using the Y axis anyway for, the, for this process I think. Um, so I know exactly where to return to to get it back into the centre position. Okay, so I need to go down 30 thou, so I'll um, cut 10 thou to time. So now I need to uh, centre drill the six holes round here. Um, so the distance between the centres from the centre of the boss to the centre of one of the holes is 7 sixteenths of an inch. So that's 0.4375 an inch, um, which is equivalent to 11.11 .11 millimetres. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the scale on here um, and work in millimetres but I'll double check it in inches on this side here as well at the same time. So um, two, four, six, eight, ten, That's eleven point eleven and about there I reckon. So that should read off the side four three seven five. Let's have a look. So we've gone around four times four. One, two, three. Four three eight five. But I think that'll be okay. So, um, everything's locked down, um, apart from the Z-axis, and uh, we're on zero degrees here. I'll lock the uh, little rotary table, and uh, we'll start centre drilling holes. So I need 60 degrees, there's actually 4 degrees per revolution on here. Um, so I can work that out, can't I? For, um, that's 15 I think. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, zip, spot on 60. Lock again. Okay, so now I need to drill these holes to 2.7 millimeter in diameter, which gives good clearance for uh, 7BA. Oh, and by the way, I bought this recently off eBay. A nice little spanner made by Brittle, and it's got a 7BA and a 5BA. 
very dinky. Well, that's uh, pretty much it for one end. Uh, that's worked out pretty well. Um, I think in hindsight I could have done with a round nose end mill to do that recess. Um, but it's not too bad. So I need to follow a similar process for the other end. Well, that's worked out pretty well. Um, I decided to clean up this recess. Uh, on this cover and it's ended up being slightly wider than on the plan but I think we'll be alright so the idea now is to drill some holes in the cylinder and tap them so we can hold these on with some bolts now the way the bolts need to be applied is uh, vertical in that way um, thus avoiding that portal there and I think I've worked out a way of doing it um, using the rotary table so we'll uh, have a look at that okay so when we made the cylinder we used this uh, piece of aluminium bar I'm going to use it again to help me centralise this on the rotary table. It's pretty close, I mean there's a, there's a bit of give either side. But I think I can sort that out by putting these clamps on. So I'll have a play around and see if I can get it central. Well it took a while but I got there in the end. Um, so it's within um, a thou. So I'm happy with that. So this is the end that um, where the uh, piston rod goes. You need to remember that. Well, I don't know whether this is more luck than judgment, um, but I've managed to centre the cylinder, and I've positioned the first hole to be right at the bottom of the cylinder. So I'll centre drill. Then I'll uh, drill to I think 2.1 millimetres and then I'll tap. I think I'll uh, drill to a depth of 6 millimetres for these holes. Um, that'll enable me to get plenty of clearance for um, when I'm cutting threads. Now uh, that means actually I'll come through here. Uh, but I should be okay on the other holes. I'll double check before I get to them but uh, I think we'll be okay with 6 millimetres. I think I'll settle for five and see how that goes. So this is tapping to uh, 7BA with my super duper little spring device. Okay so I've attached the cover um, using this uh, 7BA bolt and my little spanner which works a treat and the idea now will be to use the rotary table to turn 60 degrees at a time I'm going to centre drill each of these onto the cylinder. Then I'll take the cover off. Then I'll drill each of these holes to a diameter of 2.1 millimetres. And then once I've done that, I'll then tap each of them to 7BA. And I'll do that off camera. Well, uh, that's the uh, cylinder covers finished and the um, drilling of the cylinder. Um, now, yesterday uh, I drilled one side of the cylinder and uh, to be honest I had a bit of a sleepless night because um, I, I tried these bolts in it and they're quite loose and I just couldn't work out what I'd done wrong. Um, and uh, this morning I decided to, well, press ahead and drill, the other, uh, drill and tap the other side which I've done. Um, but I just couldn't work out why these bolts um, were so loose. Uh, but I've just found out by measuring them that they're 8BA bolts uh, with an outside thread diameter of 2.2 millimetres 
Now these are 7BA tapped, so they should have an outside diameter of 2.5 I believe. Um, so Stuart Models have supplied me with the, the wrong bolts, so I'm going to have to get back to them and get some replacements. But apart from that, everything's uh, looking very, very good. Um, all the drilling was absolutely spot on. One thing I have done is at the bottom of each of these covers, I've just put um, a little punch mark. And likewise, um, on here somewhere. Yeah, a little punch mark. Um, that's just so I remember um, which holes to, to, work, to line up exactly. But to be honest, they're all spot on anyway, so I don't really think that matters. Hi there. Well, I was really uh, worried about this particular stage because I put so much work into the uh, cylinder. Uh, I didn't want to mess it up at this stage. And uh, I was really, really worried um, having tapped one side 7BA and found that those uh, bolts were uh, loose. Um, but anyway, I found what the problem is and I'll get onto Stuart models uh, as soon as I can. Um, and overall, I'm, I'm really happy with the result. You know, everything is actually uh, spot on and uh, I can't wait to assemble it. And uh, what have I learnt? Well, uh, this collet truck I bought, um, really good investment and uh, it only cost about £20 and I'd already got an ER25 collet set and uh, you save about uh, 45mm of working height uh, compared to a normal chuck um, and the only drawback is um, the amount of time it takes to change collets obviously if you if you change and drill bits in a drill chuck it's a lot quicker um, but I think it's worth it um, certainly with the extra height and I'm sure it's more accurate as well so I, I love that and I'll be using it uh, a lot in the future so um, I hope you liked this video um, if you like my videos please subscribe and uh, my next video will be making the uh, the crankshaft So, see you later.